Okay, I just did this in uh, open office in a real hurry last night. Okay, this is a problem I encountered and how I chose to solve it. And how I solved it was by bringing back builds. The problem, oops, excuse me here. The problem is uh, of late, I have been working mostly with resident fourth systems on small embedded microcontrollers. And by resident fourth, I mean the compiler runs on the target hardware not on a PC. This is the opposite of a cross-compiled environment. Uh, two of the examples I've worked with are Maxforth on the DSP uh, 56000 series and my own Camelforth on the MSP430. Typically, on such devices, the code space is in flash ROM, and there's only a small amount of RAM. For example, the 2553 variant of the MSP430 has 16K of ROM, and half a K of RAM, and I know that for some of you, half a K is a terminal input buffer. So the resident fourth compiler can't compile to RAM. It needs to compile directly to flash ROM. The primary characteristic of flash memory is that each memory location can be written only once. Um, some of them are even more restricted than that, but that's the most common characteristic. And that once written, locations cannot be changed, which again is an perhaps an oversimplification, but it's close enough for our purposes. The flash can be erased, but only in large blocks, for example, four kilobytes, and usually it gets erased to all ones. So turns out the resident fourth compiler works very well with these restrictions. For example, uh, the, this is a sort of a minimalist definition of if, uh, in this case, if the original definition would be to compile the address of the word question branch, which is equivalent to the uh, fig word zero branch, and then append a zero cell, which is going to be filled in later. And you see a lot of that in some of the older force that uh, to reserve a cell zero and comma, in this case, uh, I comma, because I'm using instruction space, I to mean instruction space on the uh, machines that have a flash ROM. So all you really have to do to fix that is to change it so that instead of appending a zero cell, it skips a cell, it allots the cell, leaves it empty. That will leave it in the all one state and it can be filled in later. The problem is create and does. Create leaves the runtime action do create or whatever it's called in your particular implementation as the code field of a newly defined word and then does later changes that code field to something else. But in flash ROM, does cannot change an already written cell. So this, for example, is the classic definition of create. Uh, actually, this is the one I use in uh, Camelforth. It's a header, build a header, append the address, do create, and then append here because this is ROMable variables. So instead of the uh, variable data being immediately added, the header and the code field, it's somewhere out in RAM, and we append a pointer to that. But the problem is not the here I comma, the problem is the do create I comma. So how I chose to solve this was, well, let me come back for a moment. But the problem this reveals, and which I have decided, is that create is overloaded. Create is used for two distinct different functions. One to define a data structure for which, yes, we want to return an address in RAM, or two, to create a, to define a defined word that was going to be built with create and does. And these are actually conceptually different uses, uh, distinct uses, and it's just an accident of history, in my opinion, that we use create for both, because up until now, it's been very easy for does to change the action of a created word. So my solution is to bring back builds from the old fig days and times before. Builds does the function of create except for it leaves the code field blank, unprogrammed. And then does can go back and fix it later. Now, I should point out that this does not solve the really tricky problem of applying does a second time. I've seen some mind-bending test case that somebody once wrote that uses does over and over again on the same word. Um, I think that's fantastically rare. Overwhelmingly, does is only going to be applied to a particular defined word once. 
So I've added builds to the system. Now, here's the problem, standards compliance. This becomes a non-standard compliant fourth system because you can't use create and does anymore. You have to use builds and does. It's very trivial to write builds for a compliant ANS system, but the program will not be compliant and we can't, the system cannot use create and does. It has, the program has to be edited. It's an easy modification. In the application, you just change uh, create does to builds does wherever it appears. There are alternatives that would not have this problem, but they all have a cost either in terms of memory or time or both. For example, we could make do create look second subsequent cell that we leave blank. It is only filled in by does. If do create the runtime action sees that that second cell has a does address, it executes that address. Otherwise, it does the standard function of do create, which is to leave the data address on the stack. So that's a uh, memory cost of a second cell every time we use create and does, and so, but and a little bit of a time impact. We could do the same thing with less memory impact by making the inner interpreter test. So this is, this is the next loop test for the code field being all Fs. And if it sees that it's an erased cell, all Fs, then it does the logic of do create hard coded into the inner interpreter. That slows everything. That affects every word in the system by making the inner interpreter slower. So you really don't want to do that. A third alternative that has occurred to me is we could make the FFFF code field, the actual code address for create. That is rarely viable. That implies that you've got writable program storage at that address and it's not being used for something else. For example, on the MSP430, that's the reset vector. So that's not usable for us. If someone can suggest a fourth alternative, I'm all ears. But those are the three that I know of. So for the time being, I'm just using builds. And I guess the summary of this talk would be 40 years ago, we made a mistake and it's too late to change it now. Any Thank questions? you very much, Brad. Okay, I guess there will be lots of questions. I will just <laughs> remind that the Twitch chat can also ask questions and tell Brad that he's wrong. And that is exactly the intention to get feedback from you all. So thank you very much, Brad. Uh, Uli was the first one to raise your head. Yeah, Hands, please go ahead. Right. Actually, no question, but a confirmation. Yeah, we came to the same conclusion that builds is probably important uh, in RAM-ROM systems. And if you look at Mecrisp, for example, Matthias Koch made the same decision. So you can't do create does in, in his system. You have to oh, do really? builds does. Yeah. So, um, and um, well, maybe maybe we can come up with some agreement on RAM ROM systems and then they are different. And then we have a slow shift uh, also with the standards um, uh, explaining the, the issues. So I, I, I don't see everything lost. Thank you very much, Uli. Um, the next one is going to be Steven, please. Well, thank you for that. I, we, we we went through a phase of thinking that we ought to compete with some of these Mickey Mouse. No, I beg your pardon. That I, we would compete with some of these smaller systems direct to flash. And we went through exactly the same list of things, except that we did one thing different, which was that for, for flash that... Um, resets to one, we inverted the immediate flag, which uh. saves uh, that was saved. But in the end, we decided that if you if you look at the sort of words that people write for small systems like that, most of these words are never bigger than 128 bytes. In which case you can sacrifice 128 bytes of RAM, you compile, you do an offset compile to RAM, and all your problems go away because it's only the, because the copy from ROM to from RAM to flash now satisfies nearly all flash systems requirements. I think Randy uh, Dumsey did a version of that. Did that solution for Maxforth. Uh, let me Quite just point. Let me just point out here that uh, we also have buffer colon in the standard which is also explicitly for embedded devices which also tries to fix this problem 
So um, as Anton already pointed, uh, pointed out several times, I think we should just uh, maybe get more cross compilers uh, into the standard at all. So Brad, I guess my, my uh, takeaway from this is you should be in the standard more, but you are already, so that's a good thing. So Anton, you had the next question. Yeah, basically I also wanted to point out that uh, Micrisp has taken the same solution uh, to, to this problem. Um, and th this has come up uh, several times in, in discussion. Uh, and uh, I made some suggestions what, what could be done, for example, have one word that does the create and the does part in, in one go and, and takes an XT uh, instead of having the does part afterwards as, as some kind of uh, sub uh, definition. Um, and it hasn't found really, uh, seems to have had not really resonated with anyone of those who do uh, compile the flash system. So uh, I don't know why, but <laughs> yeah, um, basically everybody I know has gone to this builds thing. And maybe one difference from the classical builds uh, in, in your case, and I don't know, maybe also in Matthias Trutte's uh, case is, uh, Matthias Koch's case is, uh, so Mekris case is uh, that you have only one cell in the, um, in, um, in the con CFA, so in the code field, whereas the classical builds has, has um, uh, uh, two builds in the uh, code field and another cell which points to the DAS code. I, th I think the trouble with this is that, that you're ignoring the reality of embedded systems development, which especially for things like ARMS and STM8s and things like that, is that the JTAG programming units cost a few euros each if you buy them from the right place. And actually modifying your cross-compiler to uh, download its pro program code auto magically at, in, at completion. It leaves you with a system that compiles to Flash much, much faster than any system that does compile and download. Yeah, but you know, some, of, effective... some of the systems just want to do everything on the target, uh, Stephen. So I agree with you. I also find it more comfortable to do it on the host and then have it downloaded to the target. But remember, uh, there's sometimes when there's a small hobby and you just want an uh, umbilical force or a, a self-contained force, we also have to cater for those in the standard, I think. I think it's no, just I a very agree, interesting I, discussion. I, I, I agree I agree with you, but, but the, the, unfortunately, because I've spent 40 years of my life doing embedded systems and using the professional where possible, the professional grade tools. That is essentially no excuse now. I mean, if you can't afford five euros for your JTAG programmer, please pick another hobby. I don't think that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Stephen, if it makes you feel any better uh, for my clients, for my professional work, I still use cross compilers, including yours. Um, well, but for, I get a lot of questions from hobbyists all the time or people just wanting to try things out. And there seems to be a market for that. And, you know, the five euro programmer may be available, but I don't know if anybody is selling a cross compiler for five euros. Yeah, we do. Non the, you can use MPE cross compilers for free for non-commercial use. Oh, I haven't checked your license terms lately. My, my mistake. Uh, version, version, version five point something or other. But especially the arm that is is free for non-commercial use and it's free for educators. Sure, sure. Uh, Excellent. That's very cool. But uh, you know, Stephen, just let's give them maybe. I think we can just factor in maybe builds occasionally. Uh, I just think it's good. Yeah, there is there are there are com there are direct target directories for the ARM and the MSP430 that produce compiled flash systems. Mm. Yes. All right. Uh, are there any other yeah. remarks? Yes. Yes, Klaus, please go ahead. Yes. Um, 
and don't forget the very crippled systems which are too small to even be able to hold to to hold an uh, interactive bus system i mean there you have to yeah. use a cross compiler yes and 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 that gets rid of these kinds of problems mm -hmm. yeah i think that's really a discussion now about umbilical versus hosted uh, versus self-contained you know there are so many different ways to do it but yeah uh Okay. Uh, I still I have. Uh, yes, Anton, please go ahead. comment on that. So basically, I think the, um, I mean, it's uh, the having theory years in in embedded systems. My impression is that people do uh, the uh, compile on the target uh, fourths because that's the fourth way to do. I mean, because. Uh, that gives you the interactive system on the target and so on. I mean, it's uh, nice to, to be able to have an umbilical system and so on, um, which simulates that uh, experience. But um, if you, I mean, it's, it's a lot more work, of course. And if you do just a plain cross compiler, that's, that's not really fourth. That's something else. And I have experience with cross compilers. All right, uh, there are more hands going up, but guys, this is an impromptu talk session, not a discussion panel. So <laughs> I would invite you all to get a room. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a virtual one, that is. I think it's a very good discussion. Uh, just let's be fair and also point out Bill, because Bill pointed out something on the chat. I'm just going to read it aloud. He said that he has got a paper on Bill's stuff dating back to 1984s. Um, which solves the need by making DAS a word uh, passing a parameter address to a separate DAS because the user writes the execution portion first and then the create option. So just so this is also said, and then I would like to refer this discussion to after the impromptu talks and now remain. Uh, is it okay for anybody? Is anybody feeling really threatened by me? I'm sorry for that. Okay, okay. All yes, right. I am. I am. <laughs> just a short remark. Uh, I want to support Stephen. I mean, working with a cross compiler, you are much more productive because feeding the source code through an umbilical link takes a lot of time. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, I also have an opinion, but I'm going to keep it for the discussion afterwards. <laughs> <laughs>